So John Lineker is no longer with the UFC. As first reported by multiple MMA news outlets, namely MMA Junket, MMA Fighting, John Lineker has been cut or as of right now it's been confirmed that he's no longer a part of the UFC's bantamweight or UFC roster at all. So this news kind of comes as a surprise because John Lineker is a great fighter and he's a very good bantamweight fighter. One thing that strikes me is that I do not believe he deserved to be cut whatsoever. So I have a little whiteboard here and I'm just going to go over some of the facts here. One of which is his professional MMA record, he's 31 and 9. That's an incredible MMA record. He's 12 and 4 in the UFC. That is a huge number that we need to consider here because there are so many comparables that have a much, much worse UFC record that is still on their UFC bantamweight roster. Some notable examples John Dodson, he's 9 and 6 in the UFC. Rob Funt, 6 and 3 in the UFC. Marlon Vera is 7 and 4 in the UFC. And this one is a little bit surprising too. And Cody Garbrandt is 6 and 3 in the UFC. Another thing to note here that I have written down is his last five, he is 3 and 2, with his only losses coming to TJ Dillashaw back in 2016 and his most recent defeat at the hands of Cody Sandhagen, who is quite arguably an up and coming prospect in the UFC Bantamweight division. At the time I'm making this video, John Lineker is the number 9 ranked bantamweight and his wins and losses could argue that he should be higher in that bantamweight division. A few additional notes here is he has 3 fight of the night awards and 1 performance of the night award. The only thing that I could really pinpoint here and, and from really nitpicking is his lack of activity in the UFC back here. TJ John were back in 2016, Marlon Vera 2017, Brian Kelly here 2018, and like I mentioned earlier, his loss to Cody was earlier this year in 2019. So he's roughly a once a year type fighter. To be honest, there's nothing wrong with that because fighters like Alexander Gustafson prior to retiring was a once a year type of fighter who was still given headlining fights and quite frankly was always in the title contention at the light heavyweight division. So this one really makes you kind of scratch your head and, and you can't really figure out why. If they're keeping guys like Sergio Pettis and Brian Kelly here on the roster, why did they cut John Lineker? Out of the bantamweights, he's probably one of the most exciting fighters. He is called Hands of Stone because, well, he has a lot of knockouts and a lot of technical knockouts under his belt in the UC bantamweight division. So my kind of thought process here is that either there's a conflict behind the scenes between Lineker's team and the UFC's management with, with Sean or Dana or whoever and they couldn't really see eye to eye anymore and parted ways mutually or, or via just an axe by the UFC or there is the fact that John Lineker wanted to not compete for the UFC roster anymore maybe he didn't feel like he was getting his fair share of the spotlight title shots maybe he didn't get the opponents that he wanted to make him look better or what it may be and lastly maybe the UFC are just kind of trimming down that bantamweight division just like they're doing with the flyweights but i want to know what you guys think why do you guys think john lineker was cut by the ufc do you think there's something behind the scenes that we just don't know or do you think he rightfully deserved to be cut i want to know what your thoughts are make sure you guys comment down below and in other piece of news today, probably one of the bigger headlines is Joanna Young Jacek is taking on Karate Hottie Michelle Watterson in the main event of UFC on ESPN Plus 19. That takes place in this year in October in San Francisco. So as of right now, it's the only foot announced on this card. Obviously, they're giving Michelle Watterson a huge platform to compete against one of the greatest female fighters of all time. And this is really just kind of a prize fight for Joanna to kind of come in show her dominance, show her case to compete for the title, and to get paid once again. Joanna, obviously, we know she's 15 and 3 in her mixed martial arts career. She's the former champion, and she looks to try and get back on her momentum and to really establish herself as a top contender. If you look at her last five, Joanna is 2 and 3. Her only two wins in that span come against Tisha Torres at UFC on Fox 30 and Jessica Andrade at UFC 211 and her three losses obviously we know the back to back to Rose Namajunas and the most recent kind of frightening loss 
came by the hands of Valentina Shevchenko at UFC 231 in Toronto. While on the other hand, we have Michelle Watterson, obviously a fan favorite. She is the mom of the UFC. How can you hate her? It's trying to be the very first mom to be a UFC champion, and she has kind of a good case to compete for a title if she gets her hand raised against Joanna. In her last five, she's three and two, currently in a three fight win streak against the likes of Courtney Casey, Felice Herrick, and Carolina. I'm not gonna try and pronounce her last name. So details of the event are still kind of minimum. We all know it's gonna be in San Francisco, California, UFC on ESPN plus 19. We don't have any other fights on that card. Hopefully it's gonna be a little bit more to add to that pizzazzle. But for a main event at this, I think this is a good fight. But let me know what you guys think of the fight announcement. Also, let me know what you guys think of John Lineker if you haven't already commented down below. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you comment, like, and subscribe if you haven't for all the MMA news, all the MMA gossip, and everything in between. And as always, have an excellent day.